here for oh nice dennis is the man thank you um and i'm kind of the the hostess with the mostest for this morning so i want to welcome everybody who's here for the first time. Um, I'm just going to announce a couple of ground rules. We want this to be a safe space for folks to come and speak freely and um, bring clients if you'd like to. So we have uh, a no soliciting rule, no stealing resources, no stealing clients. We're all friends here and we want it to be a fun community thing um, for folks to join. Um, I'm gonna go through a few site core announcements and then we'll do the site course stand up and everybody can kind of introduce yourselves and um, tell us what you're working on. So just a few announcements from Sitecore in the last month or so. Sitecore has acquired Moosend. Additional ex Edition accelerates delivery of the industry's first truly integrated SaaS-based digital experience platform. Um, I don't know most much about it, but it's exciting to see that Sitecore continues to invest in kind of adjacent platforms and technologies as it um, uh, acquires more companies. So that's exciting news. Um, the global virtual, now somebody's gonna have to have to correct me. Is it pronounced Subcon? Is it, yes, Jim's, okay. Cause it looks like Sugcon, like sugar, yeah. but that doesn't make sense. So um, global virtual Subcon 2021 is coming up um, with a bunch of dates in June starting on, I believe this, Friday, so Friday and Saturday. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on and there's links to all of those. And then um, as we talked about, Symposium is going to be virtual this year. Um, Got to go to Vegas on your own dime and lose your own money, I guess. And I'm, I'm willing to do that to have a good time. But um, Symposium will be virtual this year and the call for papers closes, I believe on Saturday on, um, on the 5th. So you want to be a speaker, get your uh, ducks in a row and send that in soon. So um, I will kind of get started with um, our stand up. We'll just, we just kind of round robin, introduce yourself briefly and what you've been working on. Um, again, my name is Megan Jensen. You can call me MJ. I'm with Proficient in Minneapolis. Um, I'm doing a ton of training this spring. I just got done with my sixth um, workshop with a client, um, walking them through all their marketing definitions, um, personalization, behavioral personalization, and a whole bunch of testing. So um, my brain has kind of been in that space for the last six weeks. And then um, I'm actually working on an, an Epi server optimizely um, project. I know it's um, not, a, not a site for a project, but um, I'll be working with that team on a new website launching in August. So it's kind of interesting to see how, um, how the Optimizely platform is the same as and different from um, how Sitecore works. So that's been kind of fun for me. Um, Dennis, I'm going to make you go next. Glad to, glad to. I am heads down, getting ready for my subcon. Or I like, I like your version better, Shug. Shug. <laughs> I think we should call it Shugcon. Sounds sweeter. Um, so yeah, I, I'm getting ready for my subcon presentation where I'll be doing uh, something off of Sitecore Content Hub, 360 personalized content everywhere. Um, yeah, so that's going to be some fun. I'm going to take a slightly different approach than um, you know, our, our boy Content Hubby, who's just going to be doing some stuff with Box Ever. I'm going to do a few things publishing content to social media and then getting analytics back into the platform so you can optimize your content strategy. So join in, looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, that's my big focus right now. And I think in the next month or so, I'm gonna be talking a lot about omni-channel content strategy based on Content Hub. All right, who wants to do theirs next? You can put up your hands just. I can go well, next, I guess. Nice. Okay, so I'm um, Eduardo Moraes. I'm the director of digital strategy at Niche Tech. Uh, we have been working a lot with Content Hub lately, helping the clients to figure out what should go there, what shouldn't, and uh, doing some content strategy as well, uh, which is pretty exciting and helping them to do migrations of a lot of old legacy repositories into Content Hub, uh, preparing my paper for the symposium this week around that topic. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, I'm based in Ottawa, Canada. So part of North America, still valid. I'll pick uh, James Petillo to go next. I am a uh, content tech working with Proficient. I'm currently working on helping a, a large insurer migrate content into their new site. And it's been a bear, but we're making use of snippets. We're trying to get it all done. So I will pick uh, Brett to go next. Hey guys. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I'm Brett Birchtold. Uh, I'm self-employed. I've been working as a marketing strategist for about 18 years now, um, eight years in the Sitecore platform. Um, I've worked with, over the past eight years, I've worked with agencies that have done Sitecore, um, but I'm on my own now and I focus uh, in the St. Louis area, St. Louis, uh, Missouri area. So um, yeah, I also lead the, uh, the local Sitecore meetup. Um, Jim, thanks for coming last time. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and any workshops that I can do on marketing strategy, um, optimization, CRO, things like that, I'm all for. So um, excited to be here. Thank you. I didn't pick anybody. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, who wants to go next? Um, let's see. Yeah, who wants to go next? I don't know. Pick on Jaina. Jaina, you go next. Yeah, there you go, Jaina. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'm Jaina Baumgartner. I'm a digital strategist with RDA. I've uh, been around the block with Sitecor in general, on the client side, on the partner side, with a variety of partners, done my own thing for a while. Um, but right now I'm working with RDA as a strategist. And um, I guess currently my focus is uh, sort of a split between, Megan, what you're working on and what Dennis is working on. So I have, uh, at the end of this hour, I have a workshop, a personalization workshop with the client. And uh, so I'm heads down thinking about that and, you know, making sure all is good for that. And then, um, and all the marketing definitions and everything that goes with that. Um, and then once that's done, my focus is going to be 100% on my sitcom talk uh, this Saturday. That's on um, how to get ready for Psycho 10 for content editors. So uh, super excited about that. All right, I will pick Joseph to go next. Yeah, good. I'm um, Joseph Obuna. I'm actually a software engineer, actually an embedded system engineer, a design electronics board and I do internet of things. So I also, I'm also a developer, a Python developer, and I develop all this software, embedded software that can run on microprocessors and controllers. I also do, um, I do AWS, Amazon web server, Azure and others. That would be okay for now. I pick Shelly. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Shelly. Uh, I have worked with Sycor for 10, 11 years now. Um, currently, I am, uh, I am running my own company, Hofstech, um, and I'm a Sitecore Technology MVP. I'm a dev overall, but right now I am an author and a professional speaker. So that sounds super weird to say. I think that's the first time I've really said that out loud. It's like, who even am I? What's my life anymore? Um, yeah, I'm in Florida and I have a um, like of tiaras. <laughs> I forgot All to right. mention that you're a queen. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm like, am I a princess or a queen? But last year I turned 40. Don't tell anybody, but I think at this point I'm probably a queen because I'm mm -hmm. too old to be a princess. Yes, you are. <laughs> you know who else wears crowns? Empresses. Nice. Oh, I like oh, it. Even better. Empress. And with that, 
Empress. Empress yes. of Psychor. I like it. Nice. Yeah. You also, can even change your you change your your handle to Psychor Empress. Oh my God. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to <laughs> nag that like right after this. That's a great idea. <laughs> All righty. Um let me pick Jacqueline. Oh, awesome. I'm going to turn on Mike, even though my apartment is super tragic because I haven't bought <laughs> art yet or anything. So hi, everybody. I'm Jackie. I am a former Sitecore Strategy MVP. I was a Sitecore Strategy MVP until my company was acquired by Sitecore. And they told me that I couldn't be both a Sitecore employee and a Sitecore MVP, which I think is unfair. But those are the rules. Um, so I, let's see. So I have recently, I've uh, switched teams in Sitecore uh, geographically. So I am now living in London and I have uh, transferred. So away from the North America BVNS team, and I'm now working with the EMEA BVNS team, which is very exciting. And also means that I get to take one of the European friendly slots at SugCon uh, this Saturday, where I am so excited because I was joined by, I think, 20 strategy MVPs and Sitecore thought leaders to put together a profiling strategy white paper and, or guide, excuse me, it's now been through marketing and they've decided it's a guide, not a white paper and whatever. They can call it whatever they want as long as they give me a URL by Saturday. Um, and we've put together a really comprehensive uh, look at Sitecore profiling, at the basics, at the math, at the terminology, at the strategy behind it and how to implement a strategy for Sitecore profiling. So I'm very, very excited to get to share that with the community. Finally, it's been uh, really cool to see so many community members come together to create something that I really hope will be useful. Jaina among them. So Jaina is one of our contributors. So as I think maybe was somebody else on this call was also, a, now I'm going to go look at my list and like, I want to make sure I call out everybody who, who did present, but that'll be very exciting. So not very North America friendly, unfortunately. So I think everybody will have to catch it on the YouTube channel afterward. And I pick who hasn't gone yet. I don't know who hasn't gone yet. Has everybody gone? I think Ken's Ken? gone. Ken, that I pick Ken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm the last, I think, or maybe Eduardo, maybe the last. But uh, yeah, so um, Sycor, uh strategist here at uh, Conobos and uh, also doing the whole prep for Saturday uh, on content science. It's actually a talk that uh, Dennis and Rashna had done, and I'm kind of stepping in to fill Dennis' issues while he does another talk. And um, also working with clients on uh, strategy and um, one particular client, we're trying to help them get their first campaign out the door uh, as they moved to, they actually moved to 9-3. Um, so they didn't go to 10, but we're making it work just the same. Uh, this is their first foray into using all of the tools. They are commerce enabled, their EXM, all of those goody goodies and uh, connected with SAP as well. So uh, getting all of those pieces together and we should be launching our first campaign any day now. And uh, if there's anybody else that hasn't gone, I think, yeah, I'll turn it back over to the host. And you're on mute. I, I was on mute. Someday, someday, we're just going to have normal meetings and not like have to mute ourselves and whatnot. Um, so our speaker today is actually Empress Shelley, and I'm really glad that you basically just introduced yourself, um, which relieves me of that. But I'm really excited for her topic today because I think it's something that no matter what side of the fence you're on, if you're strategy and creative or if you're on the dev team, um, how those teams communicate can make or break a project. So I'm really excited to um, let Shelly kind of take over and um, uh, teach us what you know, give, make us wiser. So I'm going to um, mute myself and, and I'm going to turn off my um, camera simply says because it's going to be easier for me to watch, but I'll turn it over to Shelly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for asking me to do this. It's not often that I talk about um, strategy at all or, you know, non-dev topics, um, especially to Sitecore people. 
but this is a topic that I've definitely seen a lot of organizations struggle with. I've worked for a lot of um, clients and partners. I can't even count how many I worked for in the past few years, but um, I was mainly a lead dev. So um, I, I had the struggle of trying to facilitate communication between development and project management and strategy and all of these things. And I was always told, nobody does this. And I was like, why? I mean, come on, <laughs> we're all on the same team here. So just some of my thoughts, let me move this toolbar around so I can clickety click. Um, yeah, and I've also worked with um, strategy MVPs who taught me a lot because as a technical person, like I don't always um, consider the why behind things, but the how, because that's my job. So first of all, I just like the main thing that I've heard in the past few years that really um, stuck with me was that it is not us versus them. I heard that from Una, and I'm not going to tr try to pronounce her last name, um, at symposium last year. And I was just like, I, I could do a whole presentation on that. So here it is. Um, when you're in a organization that has like multiple teams, there's a um, uh, sort of common occurrence that teams are siloed, right? So not a lot of um, inter uh, team understanding there's communication, but I think that on top of that, there has to be understanding. And one of the struggles that I've seen at every job I've ever had is that devs want to talk technical all of the time, which, you know, we've gone to college and we've talked about code our whole lives. Um, but I think that we need to understand that we can talk technical to non-devs because I've met people who really understood like the, the underlying technology. And I don't wanna say I was surprised, you know, unfortunately I, I kind of was because I'm in this grouping of people who are, you know, extremely technical. And so we stick together. Um, but I opened up to other teams. I've learned a lot from, you know, everybody all over. And I think that cross training um, with each team really leads to a good understanding of each team's purpose, each team's struggles. Um, and that also helps teamwork, which I'm always um, also very adamant about teamwork. Um, so I think that, well, no, I know that I've, I've worked with strategists who not only weren't comfortable, but avoided talking to uh, devs. And that happens for many reasons. Sometimes devs are um, different personalities also. So that is a topic that I will cover in a little bit. Um, but I really wanted to say that cultivating a team environment does not happen overnight. It's really, it, it takes time, it takes trust. And this um, strategy, well, I shouldn't say strategy to strategy people when I'm not talking about psych core strategy, but um, 
I think that leadership overall sets the tone for organizations in general. And it's very important to ensure that leadership isn't propagating the idea of us versus them. I've definitely seen that done before. I've seen organizations say, yeah, teamwork, but then don't act in the manner that supports that um, idea. So I think that this happens because a lot of leaders aren't like really connected to the daily tasks or um, don't have boots on the ground, right? Aren't like um, ensuring that the, um, what is it called? Style of leadership is um, supporting teamwork. So I think that a lot of times that happens because they're just aloof, like, you know, go team. Why isn't this happening? Why aren't people, you know, but that's leadership is, is hard. Um, one of the things that I like to do to uh, mitigate this are team building exercises. There are a lot of um, exercises to choose from, and I would definitely say try to do them during office hours. Because for me personally, I'm, I'm actually introverted, which is funny. It's just like, um, which, you know, nobody thinks of that for me because I'm a speaker as well. But you'll hear from actors and stuff that the spotlight is a, a lonely place. It's just you. So that's kind of how introverts can put themselves out there, but introverts really won't want to, you know, hang out at a bar after work with everybody and like be amongst a group of people. It's anxiety and stuff like that. That's where I fit in. I have never, well, recently, I, I haven't attended like, um, dinners or like parties at work. Um, it isn't because I don't want to mingle with people, but it's just too stressful for me all at once. So a little bit of like understanding of multiple types of personalities is a good start. Then on the other hand, you have extroverts who um, are accustomed to using office parties for networking and, you know, all of that other important stuff. And I, I commend anyone that's able to do that. I've always been terrible at networking in person. Anyway, online is a different um, environment. Yeah. So I'm going to start um, with what devs struggle with. Um, and this isn't like me preaching to you how to treat devs. It's, <laughs> I'll cover both. Um, but what developers struggle with the most, I know, is that coding is like a train. It is very slow to start, but once you get moving, you're chug, chug, chugging along. And if you're interrupted, you know, it can take time to restart your work. Um, and that's just because of the complexity of the code. I'm sure you all, you all know this. Um, but for me, it's, it's very hard to stop in the middle of the tracks. Like you have to keep moving, but at the same time, you have to understand that other people need to ask you questions and that you need to respond in a timely manner. Um, but 
yeah, I have an example of, um, I had a project where I had to create the entire backbone of the website that included a <clears throat> um, API to a service that made content and then I would I would import that and it was very hard because the content wasn't normalized and stuff and so um, I, I had to concentrate really hard and a lot of the times I ended up working overtime or weekends because I'm the kind of person that when someone pings me and asks me a question, no matter what I'm doing, I will like reply almost immediately. That has its good aspects because I'm helpful, but then that also has its bad aspects because I'm not productive, you know, and then it, uh, it's more stress and all of that. Um, so for devs, I think the key there is balance, you know, have a um, key sense of what is to do like now, what is nice to do and what um, questions people are asking you that are really urgent because most of the time it's fairly urgent. Um, and I will talk about why in a little bit. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to click into this, but yeah, it's hard to just stop <clears throat> in the middle of the tracks. Um, yeah, and so when you try to start up again, we have to really like reorganize the code in our head. I don't, it would probably help to like write it down or something like that. I, I don't know a lot of people that do that, but um, just because, you know, each um, layer is just very complex. I've, I've always struggled with um, restarting and having it take a long time. Um, but the good news is that I am one example. Devs now come in all shapes and sizes, all types of personalities. I've worked with a ton of people. So no longer is it, you know, just people who enjoy robots and don't want to talk to humans, <laughs> you know, that um, hasn't uh, continued, which is really nice. But then other people like me are people pleasers, and that's not the best thing either. <laughs> so I like to look at each type of personality and learn from them. One of the best things I learned uh, fairly recently within the past like two years was no deploys on Fridays. <laughs> and when I heard that, I was like, that's so lazy. Why would you do that? I was like judging people who were trying to strike a balance in their lives because if you deploy on Fridays and it goes wrong, you'll have to work all weekend to fix that. And that's not great. So now I understand that and I agree 100% when I judged them before. Ah, these slides, anyway. Um, on the other side for strategy, you guys are often client facing, which is a stress like no other, you know? Um, so you're presenting to the client regularly, um, ensuring that the client's needs uh, are, are met and strategy needs are very complex. They're very complicated and nuanced, honestly. I can't remember what um, like profile and pattern cards really, you know, <laughs> Like, I, I understand the technical aspects and kind of the why, but that's a topic that has always been um, extremely, like, 
complicated. Um, but when you're talking to clients, I think that you will have questions and you need answers in a timely manner. I've had a lot of jobs where the number one um, complaint from strategists was that the devs take too long to answer questions, um, which I understand, which is probably also why I took it upon myself to answer all of the questions, even for projects I was not a part of. Um, so, so people would go over the lead developer on one project and, and come to me, which uh, I really shouldn't have allowed now thinking about that, but it just kind of um, happens when you have um, people who have similar personalities and, you know, they just gravitate towards each other. Um, but you also, I've learned a lot from strategists about how the user uses Sitecore because with Sitecore, there's a lot of um, lack of planning ahead, not just for the end user on the public site, but then also the CMS user as well, because there are a number of ways to implement just about anything. Um, and so I, I have always asked a lot of questions um, to strategists about how should this look in Sitecore? What pain points does the client have in Sitecore? What can we do to help like them understand how it all works? There um, are a lot of options for that. And I've had a lot of really cool conversations about um, stuff like help text and just anything to help point the user to um, understanding each component, each, um, each page type, all of that stuff. And so for me, strategists, are the key there. Um, I, I did want to just pause here for a second because I am not a strategist. So I wanted to ask you all what struggles you have, if anybody wants to. Hey, Shelly, this is MJ. Um, so part, like a lot of folks on this call, a big part of what we do is teaching client teams how to be content authors, how to, how to do the things in Sitecore that, um, you know, they're going to have to do kind of for the care and feeding of their website. Um, and I have learned that I've kind of had to become the kind of a translator between developers and the client because developers, you know, they just kind of speak and think on a different plane. And it's, I think it's kind of hard for them to speak at a quote unquote civilian level of language. Um, do you have any advice for, I don't know, helping developers get on just a regular marketer's playing field when they're explaining things without the help of a strategist kind of in between? Yeah, excellent, excellent question. I have seen this so many times. Um, I think that what it really takes is cross training um, and that training for devs would really include leadership as well. I, I am very passionate about developers who are shoved into management and they have no leadership skills, like they'll ultimately fail. But when you're working with clients, they come first. They are the, you know, you're building the system for them. Mm -hmm. So in order to help 
you know, strategy or, or any non dev team. I think that the devs have to kind of talk a little bit more abstract and then strategy has to meet that. But like, I've never met anybody in strategy that couldn't meet that right? Mm -hmm. Because you do understand the technical aspects and to assume that you don't is awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, yeah. So real quick on that. So MJ, I think um, one of the things that's helpful had been helpful for me in my time in Sitecore specifically has been, I came from an inf information architecture background. So, um, and, and then kind of weaseled into marketing and, 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 and um, went full force into the marketing strategy part of it. But, um, you know, my, my early days about 18 years ago was just information architecture and being able to reutilize that terminology to match up to whenever a developer is going through the, in the project, they're going to through content ontology as an example, being able to marry those processes up and being able to explain, you know, here's all the structure and things like that. Being able to have that kind of language in your back pocket is very, very helpful in talking with the developer because it, it puts you in the mindset of a strategist to be able to say, um, I, I, you know, renderings, layouts, uh, things of that nature already are kind of, I'm already thinking through that when I'm thinking through um, the content strategy part of it. So that's a very nice content architecture, information architecture is a really nice area in between to be able to, to um, you know, connect and have those, uh, you know, um, relationship there mm -hmm. in a project. But I will say it always goes worse in communication, in my opinion, and in my, in my experience, whenever it's a waterfall approach and everybody kind of just does what they can do to get a project out the door in say eight months versus being in an agile type of project where every two weeks you're running in sprints and you very align to mm -hmm. those two week outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. It always goes worse whenever with that relationship, if you don't have that agile team behind you and, and helping. Yeah. Excellent point. I feel like I, had a story for that, but now I can't remember. It just kind of flew out of my head. But yeah, I've experienced a lot of that. I've I've worked with companies that are are still waterfall, and then they tried to add in elements of agile, and I call that scrum fall because that's not going to work. Sure. It's just not. <laughs> and then if I could just bring up one point too, in with the way that I work, and you know, not to say. Uh, not to disagree with MJ, but while a lot of it is developers learning to speak to marketers, it's also marketers understanding the solution that they've been provided and being able to address and talk with developers in uh, at their language too. So it's not like developers need to dumb it down. I mean, yeah. and just to put it in that way, not, not, a, not putting it any other way than that. But I mean, um, marketers need to learn to talk up to where the developers are at as well. Like you have to meet in the middle. That's the only way that's gonna work. And I do find that our position as a, as a strategist in the middle is kind of acting as that translator. But I mean, you just have to get them to hold hands and then you can let them go. Exactly, yeah. It's a two-way street always, always with anything. Um, yeah, and I would also say for cross-training purposes, um, it would be good for um, each uh, team to have meetings to just talk all this through, talk about dev language for strategists to learn, and then strategy language for devs to learn, um, which is not something I've, I've ever... Um, seen on the like department level, but project teams do that a lot. The problem there is that when you have a company with multiple projects and each team is kind of like doing its own thing, when 
you're working on multiple teams and they're all different. It's just, it's confusing, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to that hey, point on being confusing, I think the key, like you mentioned there, bringing the teams to the table and having those open discussions and getting those, like having that communication back and forth is key. Um, Cause again, right. We don't necessarily know what we don't know. And by having those discussions, we can open the floor and make sure that there's open communication both ways. Mm -hmm. yep. Hey, Shelly, one, one thing that I wanted to mention there, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think in these teams, we're dealing, we're going to be dealing with a large variety of people that, you know, have just Sitecore experience or Sitecore optimizely, you know, Epi, uh, Box Ever Now, you know, all, all these other things, right? And if we're talking, as far as a strategist talking to a client, they're going to have a different set of like definitions for all that in their head too. I think it's really important to kind of get a shared definition for a variety of these topics, but things like when you mentioned patterns and profiling, it's the patterns are segmentation on a contact content prof profiling provides the profiles, right? That, that are measurement for that segmentation on a contact. But if we get into another tool, it's called segments as an example in box ever, you know, the, so we just have to kind of understand that shared definition, not just between, you know, what's a dev going to call it because they're working specifically in site core, but also what's the marketer going to understand that as what's the client going to un understand that as so that you're all working toward the same end goal at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent point. Excellent point. I'm just now realizing that somehow I only have 10 minutes left. <laughs> so we might have to split this into two um, sessions I did, here. And after you said that, I'm like, oh, but I have one thing. Um, I, I did want to say that, and this is something that we finally did formalize specifically for Psychro projects, but that's been so helpful are the readiness checklists. Yes. that F boss finally formalized mostly because especially if you're if your strategy team and your mark and your marketing team and your dev team especially if there's three of them like three different teams mm -hmm. and you have to bring them all together for the good of the project being able to go through it either together or even sometimes to just hand it off to the development team and say i need these things i need all of these things to be working in order for for us to really help the client achieve about the full value of this platform is so helpful because it's like, we just need to make sure all of this is working and it's not a value judgment. It's just a, hey, can we get, and every developer I've ever worked with loves requirements. So it's like, great, I can just get, yes, this is what I need. I just need a list of things that you need. And so I'm actually, I was just looking for them. I'm gonna drop the full list. Um, unfortunately it's fenced, I'm sorry. Um, if you want all of them, but then there's an unfenced link that I will also drop that's just the optimization checklist, which is the one that I use the most often, so. You can, your mileage may vary. You can use whichever ones you want. Okay, I'm nice. done. Back to you, Shelly. No, that's fine. That's an excellent point. And somehow you read what was next. Requirements, <laughs> like I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so definitely like, like Jacqueline said, devs need requirements. I've been in jobs where the devs write the requirements and that's just no no don't don't make your devs write the like use cases and the and the user stories that should come from strategy or you know a content editor or even qa like i'll i'll take that but but developers should um you know, help out with the technical requirements, but technical and the user or the business requirements are completely different. You've got to know the why and the how, both. Um, just looking at my time. Yeah, so. Hey, Shelly, this uh -huh. is MJ. I was going to say, don't um, don't beat yourself over the head trying to get done in eight minutes. We would be l happy to have you back for part two so that we can get more into like processes and that sort of thing as well. So take as much of the next five minutes as you want, and we will be happy to have you back to continue this conversation. Awesome. Thanks. I, I agree with that. There are some topics that I, that I guess I would like to raise in other folks as well, and we will be more than glad to have a follow-up.
<laughs> that's that's awesome. I was actually afraid that this presentation wouldn't be long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you get strategists just, talking and yeah. so funny. Yeah, and I'm I'm just also so passionate about the topic of communication in general. I think that, you know, it's the most important thing for any organization. You've, you've got to have teams that can communicate with each other. Um, but one um, thing for requirements, especially, is don't skimp on, on any detail that, that you think is, you know, stupid or obvious. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm a website user and I want the site to load, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that would be fine if I saw that. I just anything to add to um, explaining, you know, why and how it should work for the end user and then also the Sitecore user. And that is something that I honestly, I have never worked anywhere that provided requirements for the Sitecore user and i've i've said it at at my past like three or four jobs that we really need that information because developers you know we're engineers we tend to over engineer something and we aren't designers most of us we're not um ux ui like you know a lot of us used to be if you're as as old as i am then i had the pleasure of getting into web development early where a dev was the designer, the front end developer, the back end developer, the database admin. Um, I'm really glad that they split that up after a couple years. Um, but another thing that really helps with requirements um, is to talk about them. Um, and then practice active listening so that everybody's on the same page. Um, and it's just really um, helpful to sort of bridge the gap between um, tech speak and like strategy speak as well. And it'll probably also help um, cross training to, um, to teach each side more, you know, terminology and stuff like that. Um, BB. I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit. Hold on. Just real quick, just... real quick time check. It's four, three minutes to the hour. So yeah. wherever it's a natural place to wrap up, Shelly, go right yeah. ahead and we'll pick it up next time. So you all know I'm an author <laughs> and I always have to tell you what I'm working on. We have on Pluralsight the Sitecore learning path, which is available now. And then right now I'm working on managing Sitecore Docker containers and I want to tear my hair out, but that will be coming in August, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but for you guys, I wanted to kind of showcase, I, I also teach leadership and management, and I have a few courses that have um, a lot of topics about, you know, multiple personalities working together, um, and then um, a lot of stuff about, you um, cultivating a communication plan as well, which um, that slide was pretty long. So I think we'll talk about that next time. And the other cool thing is that these courses are animated. Um, my husband uh, has studied production and stuff like that. So he makes these really cool scenarios and stuff. And I, um, I hear a lot that people like that. So just something to think about. Oh, and also if um, any of you are interested, I, I always have trial codes as well. So just uh, 
ping me on Slack or Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever I'm around. Um, but you can see a list and links to all of these on my website at hofstech.com slash courses. I think I'm, I'm going to wrap up there. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Shelly, this was... This was so good and I knew it would be. Um, I first heard uh, Shelly speak last fall at, at Psychro Symposium about uh, kind of research and empathy. And I was literally standing up in my living room <laughs> cheering them like somebody gets it. So um, excited to have you back. We will okay. resume with part two, either July or August. We'll start looking at calendars, um, but wanted to thank everybody for being here. And Dennis has some <laughs> outro music in honor of Shelly. So. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. You're pretty. Awesome. All right. All right. See you guys. Okay, bye bye. Have a good day.